Today we're going to take a look at how the Bainbridge mass spectrometer works. The spectrometer that we're going to look at is called the Bainbridge mass spectrometer. It's one of the oldest and simplest of the mass spectrometers. And there's actually a lot of really interesting engineering details to it. We're not going to look at those in this video. We're just going to focus in on the basics. And I think you'll find it's a really good review of electricity and magnetism. So there's four regions to the Bainbridge mass spectrometer. In the first region here, that's where you have an elemental gas, and they go through a process where they get ionized and collimated. Collimated means put into a beam. They then enter the second region here, where you've got accelerating plates. And that's going to give the ions a fairly high speed. But they'll have a range of speeds as they enter into this third region, which is called the velocity selector region. And what the velocity selector region is going to do is narrow down that range of velocities. So you've got a very, very narrow range of velocities coming through the other side of the velocity selector. And their speed will be known very precisely. They will then go into a fourth region where there's a magnetic field and they will execute circular motion and the different isotopes will be separated. And it will be possible then to determine the mass of each isotope of that elemental gas. So now, let's look at each region in a little more detail. The first region is the ionization region. And in that region, you're going to have an elemental gas come into an evacuated chamber. And at one end of that chamber, you're going to have what's called an electron gun. Well, an electron gun does exactly what you'd expect it to do. It fires out electrons at high speed. So the electrons are going to come out, and they're going to hit these gas atoms. And when they do that, they're going to knock electrons off the gas atom. So, of course, it's going to become charged. And in almost all cases, it takes on a charge of plus one, because it's so much easier to knock off one electron than two electrons. So now that we've got these positive ions, there's some good engineering that goes on. And there's voltages on the walls of the chamber that kind of direct those positive ions towards an opening on this side of the chamber. So the ions are going to exit into the second region of the mass spectrometer. So the positive ions pass into this second region. They'll enter a opening between parallel plates. So you'll have a parallel plate on the left and another one on the right. The plate on the left is going to be at a higher potential than the plate on the right. And that means we're going to get an electric field to the right, accelerating those positive ions towards this opening in the far plates. The objective here is to give the positive ions a fairly high velocity. And you'll recall when we studied parallel plates, we simply used conservation of energy, that the loss in electric potential energy would be the same size as the gain in kinetic energy. Our loss in electric potential energy will equal the charge, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, times the voltage across the plates. Our gain in kinetic energy, well, if they came into this region with a speed of zero, and that's not necessarily true, but they will come in with a small speed compared to their final speed. And so to simplify the math, let's just say that the gain in kinetic energy is going to be a half mv final squared. Then if we solve for v final, it's going to equal 2q, change in voltage, divided by mass, all square rooted. That means the least energetic of these positive ions should have this final speed. But some will be going a little bit faster than that because they had an initial speed that was a little bit greater. So there is going to be a range of speeds that's going to pass on into the third region. So as our positive ion passes through that hole, it enters region 3, which we call the velocity selector. And in the velocity selector region, there's a positively charged plate and a negatively charged plate. And of course, that exerts an electric force on our positive ion. And that force is going to be downwards in this case. What we want to have is a force to oppose that. And we're going to have a magnetic force that opposes the electric force. And what's really cool about the magnetic force is that it depends on the speed. So the faster that ion's moving, the bigger the magnetic force. So if our particle's coming in too fast, the magnetic force is going to be too big, and the particle is going to deflect upwards. 
if our particle is coming in too slow, then the electric force is going to be bigger and the particle is going to get deflected downwards. And it's only if the magnetic force and the electric force are equal in size that the particles are going to pass through that hole and enter the fourth region. So let's look at the condition for which those two forces are going to be balanced. The magnetic force given by QVB, the electric force given by Q times E, if I set those equal to each other, QVB equals QE, then I'm going to get that the speed will be given by the ratio of the electric field to the magnetic field. Now typically what we do is we hold the magnetic field constant and we vary that electric field. And we choose a value of the electric field such that we get lots of ions coming through the hole. And we're going to know the value of the electric field between the plates because it's going to equal the voltage across the plates divided by the distance between the plates. To create the uniform magnetic field, we'll use Helmholtz coils. And we have formulas for calculating the size of that magnetic field. And for the direction of the magnetic field, we'd use our right hand rule. We'd point the fingers of our right hand in the direction that those positive charges are moving. And we need to get a magnetic force that points upwards. And if we do that with our right hand, our palm is going to point into the page. That means our magnetic field inside here is going to be into the page. So now let's take a look at what's going to happen to those positive ions as they enter the fourth region of the mass spectrometer. So here's our positive ion entering into that fourth region where we want to separate the different isotopes. And what we want these positive ions to do is to execute circular motion. So if we have a large mass particle, it's going to execute a circle with a large radius. And if we have a small mass particle, it's going to execute a circle with a smaller radius. And that's because something with more mass has more inertia. That means it's harder to accelerate. And turning is a form of acceleration. So these positive ions with large mass, they don't turn as easily. They make larger radius circles. Now, how are we going to produce that circular motion? with a magnetic field, of course. And in this case, we're going to need a magnetic field that's going to be out of the page. And the reason that I know it's got to be out of the page is because when we did the velocity selector, I wanted a magnetic force that was upwards. This time, I want a magnetic force that's downwards. So I just need to put my magnetic field in the opposite direction as I did for the velocity selector. And the other key component to this fourth region is to have a detector. So we're going to have a detector along here so that we can record where the different isotopes are landing. And of course, if we can record that, that means we're going to be able to measure the radius of their circular motion. Now all we have to do is the most common thing that we do in this course, and that is apply Newton's second law. We say that the net force or the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Well, there's only one force acting, and that's the magnetic force, QVB. And that's got to equal the mass times the acceleration, but in this case we've got uniform circular motion, so our acceleration will be given by v squared over r. That means we're going to be able to solve for the mass. We can cancel out a v. The mass is going to be proportional to r, and the proportionality constant will be qb divided by v. So typically here, the charge will be one elementary charge, or, or 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. The magnetic field, we'd know that from the setup of our Helmholtz coil and the current through that coil. And the speed is, of course, known because it's going to equal that ratio of the electric field to the magnetic field in the velocity selector. The radius is measured, and that means you're actually going to be able to determine the mass of these isotopes. So not only do we separate the isotopes, we also get their mass. So in summary, we saw that this mass spectrometer uses very basic principles from electricity and magnetism, and that it can be used to separate isotopes of an element, but it can also be used to measure the mass of isotopes. As an added tidbit to end the video on, scientists have speculated that in the future there will be something called a fusion torch recycling plant. In this type of plant, you take all your garbage, heat it up into a plasma state so it's nothing but ions, run those ions through a mass spectrometer so that all the different nucleides are going to be separated and then collected. And that means your garbage be separated into all those individual elements. And then you're going to be able to reuse all those elements. So there's hope for the future. So please take the time to like videos, 
to make comments, to ask questions, become a subscriber, sign up for notifications, become a member or a Patreon. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.